Hey guys, I have actually started dinner a little earlier today. I'm actually making some kalalu and um, I'm kind of getting it prepped. You have to strip the kalalu um, and this is kind of what you take off it when you strip it. I'm not sure what this part is called. If it's this, I'm not sure what it's called, but you kind of have to take it off because it, if you cook with it, it's going to make it um, kind of hard. It's true, like it's it's too much fiber basically, right? It's kind of fiber, so it's not gonna really cook or I don't think it's digestible either. So you kind of have to take it off. So this is kind of like, I think the hardest process of just getting the color loo all prepped, but um, it's really good vegetable. So um, I'm, I've been wanting to cook this since yesterday, so I just have the time. But you know, while I was actually getting this prepped, I was thinking about something I read yesterday in Isaiah chapter 55, yes, 55, and it talks about how easy and free salvation is for us. And oftentimes, when we think about Christ and what he's done for us and what he's doing for us, and when we think about giving our life to him or what we're supposed to do for him, we think that you know, it's so hard for us, like, it's going to take so much out of us, like, there's so much at stake for us, right? Um, but the only thing that is at stake for us is when we don't give our life to Him, when we don't accept that gift of salvation. That's the only thing that is at stake for us. And, and sometimes we kind of have it the other way around, unfortunately. And um, I was going to read a little part of um, Isaiah chapter 55 so you could get the gist of what I'm talking about. And let me try to find it right here. It says, oh, here it is. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 1, it says, Ho, oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. So, so Christ is using these earthly things like wine and milk um, to symbolize. Because, you know, we, we, we eat every day. Like, we have to eat physical food every day to sustain us. So he's using something physical or used to sustain us to say, you buy these things for money. But, you know... There's something else that I could give you that also sustains you, and this thing is free. And so he's he's comparing that with his gift for us. And it's, and verse two says, "Wherefore he spend money for that which is not bread, and labor for that which satisfies not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye." which is good and let your soul delight in fatness and it says incline your ear and come unto me here and your soul shall live and i will make an everlasting covenant with you even the sure mercies of david so he's saying that listen if you do this if you if you if you come to me if you decide that that you can accept what i have to give you which is completely free I'm going to make not only a covenant with you, but I'm going to make an everlasting covenant. It means that covenant will never come to an end. There's no ending to that covenant. There's no stipulation to say that covenant is going to be for a thousand years, two years, two days, a million years. No, it's going to be an everlasting covenant. And it says, when you do this, I, God, will make, will come and, and make a contract with you because a covenant is basically a contract. Now, if we can imagine that the God of this universe, the most powerful being in this universe, is seeking to make a contract with us, mortal man, and, 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 and to be politically correct, I'm going to say mortal men and women and children, right? And so, um, let's not let this opportunity pass us. Let us not make a day go by when we when we when we when we fail to recognize the goodness of God towards us and say, God, you have I have nothing to give. 
No, people talk about um, giving their lives to Jesus. We don't have a life to give to Jesus. Or, or we have nothing to give. We have nothing to give, right? The, the old Adam is a dead race. When he said to Adam, if they don't eat of this fruit, they would have surely died. That was a spiritual death. And that was a physical death too because they started to die. They just, they just, they just didn't drop dead instantly, but they started to die, right? Um, their cells didn't work the same anymore. Their bodies didn't function the same anymore. And so we really don't have anything to give back to God. But he has something to give to us. And the one thing that we can do is to make a decision that we want to accept that gift. And that is the gift of salvation. And today, in the same in the same chapter, um, it says today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Because you know what? It is not going to be every day that we're going to hear the voice of God. If we continue to harden our hearts, then after a while, we just can't hear it anymore. It's almost as if, like, you know, I'm not sure if you've ever been in a, in a noisy environment. And the first time you go, you're like, oh my gosh, this environment is so noisy. Like, how do the people operate here? Like, how do they manage? And then after a while, you keep going back and going back, you hear the noise less and less. It, well, it's not that you hear the, the noise less and less, but you might think it's that. But it's because you've gotten used to it so much that it doesn't affect us anymore. It doesn't impact. It doesn't have its impact on us anymore. It is the same thing with the voice of Christ. The more we we the more we we neglect his voice, the more we don't listen to his voice, the, the more we choose to to um to ignore him, it's 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 a less and less we'll we'll, we'll be inclined to to do what he wants us to do. It's, we, and it's going to get to the point, and it will get to the point where we just can't hear it anymore. We just can't. And so, it is a day of salvation, right? Um, some people, some, some of us are waiting until we're, we're old. I was one of them. I was, I was planning on waiting until I'm old. Like, you know, I've lived my life already, and I'm kind of old, and I, I'm kind of about to die. But... But fortunately, you know, God has, you know, he, he woke me up along the way and I realized like the path I was going and that mindset was not the correct mindset and that I was losing out on a, on a precious gift that he is offering me and that he's, he's always been offering me and that he's not only offering that to me, he's offering that to all of us, to all humans right now, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've said, no matter what you have um, agreed upon. I know that some people say that they sell their soul to the devil and so they can't come back to Christ. You, as long as you're human and, you can, and you're able to make a choice, you can unchoose anything that you have made. And so Christ has bought our body and our soul with a price and that price is his blood. And no devil, no human can take that choice away from us. And any contract we've made with any other entity can be undone through the blood of Jesus. Right? The choice is ours today to, to ask Christ to come in. Right? Because he's not going to come in if we don't decide that we want him to come in. He's a gentleman, right? So he says, you know, I knock at the door. And if anyone should open the door, I will come in and I will stop with him. Right? So if you decide today you can be a child, no matter who you are today, you're not too young or too old or, or, or too far gone. If you decide today that I want, I want to buy this thing, this, this free gift of salvation, which is free. It, it's free for us, but it cost him because he paid that price. Let us not let his, let's not let his payment go you know, to waste for us. Let's take hold of it today, and and I'm going to tell you from personal experience that you will not lose out. You will not lose out. I mean, I have, that is one of my greatest regrets, not giving my life to Christ earlier than I did, right? So 
compared to some people I gave my life to Christ when I was in my thirties. And when I look back, I was like, I wasted so much of my years, like so much of my years. And if you if if so if you're younger than me, if you're younger than I, you know, um, you don't have to make the same mistakes that I did. You don't have to. I mean, I wasn't out there drinking and getting drunk and, you know, doing all these crazy stuff. I wasn't doing that. I was actually going to church. I was, you know, doing good stuff. But reading your Bible, going to church, you know, um, it, it doesn't save us. What saves us is a relationship with Christ. Is asking Christ to come and enter into our hearts and make an abode with us. So today, I was going to invite you to do that, and you're not going to regret it. It's going to be, it's going to be the best and the most important and the most intelligent decision that you've ever made in your entire life. So thank you for just hanging out with me. I I have quite a bit left actually, but I'm hoping to get it done kind of fast. So I can start like getting it washed and cut up and all that stuff. So until next time, take care.